Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to learn about uh, the application of gradient boosting algorithms or techniques for predicting uh, the compressive strength of concrete. Uh, in this video, we will learn uh, everything from scratch. So we will learn about data pre-processing, model training, model evaluation, and finally we will save the model and uh, we will load it and reuse the model for making uh, predictions on unknown data. In this tutorial, we will learn about uh, five widely used gradient boosting algorithms. They are namely XGBoost, also known as Extreme Gradient Boosting Algorithm, and uh, the second one is CatBoost, also known as Categorical Boosting, and the third one is Gradient Boosting Regressor. This is a simple gradient boosting regressor, and uh, fourth one is Histogram Based Gradient Boosting, and uh, Finally, the last one is natural gradient boosting. We will learn about all the libraries to use uh, these kind of gradient boosting algorithms. We will study in detail about uh, how to use this kind of uh, gradient boosting algorithm techniques to make a robust machine learning model for predicting the compressive strength of concrete. Uh, before we dive deep into today's tutorial, I have a small request. Behind every video, we do a lot of hard work to give you the best content. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Your subscription means a lot to us and it really motivates us to create more useful tutorials like these. Let's dive into today's tutorial. So before we start, so these are all the some of the libraries that we need for this tutorial. So mainly the first one are the NumPy, Pandas and uh, Matplotlib. These are mainly used for uh, data manipulations and uh, data visualizations. And uh, these are some uh, functions which we import from uh, SKLN library for various purposes for splitting the uh, data into train and uh, testing data sets and for performing uh, hyperparameter optimization we use grid search CV and for performing scaling we use standard scalar and uh, we use R2 score evaluation metric and the last one is the joblib library we use this joblib library for uh, saving the final machine learning model and to reuse the machine learning model for making future predictions and uh, apart from this we also import uh, uh, libraries that are specific to these five gradient boosting algorithms so those libraries we will import uh, in these sections so namely here for applying this uh, gradient boosting algorithm we import xgboost as xgb here actually so likewise we import all these uh, gradient boosting algorithms wherever it is necessary before we dive into the main topic so we need to import the data that we have to work on so we are going to work on uh, the concrete compressive strength data available in uh, UCI machine learning repository so you can find the links here so using these links you can go to the website and download the data so this data consists of uh, nine features overall of this first eight are uh, the input features and the last one is the only output feature that is concrete compressor strength uh, and it has overall uh, 1030 samples actually here I am converting uh, the pandas data frame into a numpy array for compatibility with the uh, several uh, gradient boosting algorithm libraries so here I am separating uh, the input and uh, output features. So I'm putting the input features in this uh, X variable and putting the only output feature in this Y variable. So as you can see, overall we have 1030 samples and uh, eight input features and uh, 1030 samples with only one output feature. Uh, let's dive into the main uh, model building and uh, training part. So the first one is the XGBoost, also known as Extreme Gradient Boosting Algorithm. Imagine this old uh, gradient boosting algorithm is like a super smart tool for making prediction. Assume you have a bunch of data like uh, house prices or concrete compressive strength as in the current tutorial. You want to predict one output feature in this data. So in this scenario, this gradient boosting technique breaks down the overall big prediction problem into some smaller and simpler problems. and this gradient boosting is a technique to solve these smaller problems step by step, improving at each step. It's like climbing a staircase where each step improving each step continuously. So here I have written the function for uh, this XGBoost regression. So this function takes two parameters. They are the main uh, uh, input and output features. So here I am initializing a, a variable that stores the R2 score value at the end of this function. So after that, I have created a while loop. This while loop keeps on running until the R2 score is less than 0.9. Whenever the R2 score crosses 0.9, this loop will terminate automatically. 
So here I am splitting the data into the testing and training data sets. Overall, I'm considering 20% of the data to be test and the remaining 80% for doing trading. And here I'm doing a scaling operation using standard scalar. And after that, here I have defined some hyperparameters that are specific for this XGB regressor. So here I'm doing this grid search optimization for performing the optimization over these hyperparameters to find out the best values for these uh, variables. After finding the best parameters, I am initiating the XGB regressor with these best parameters and I am creating a model out of it. And using that model, I am fitting the training data into this. And after that, here I am making predictions. And once we are done with the prediction, so we are going to find out the R2 score value. So generally, any R2 score greater than 0.85 is statistically good, but here I am aiming for 0.9 for more reliable machine learning model. So once the training and testing is completed, I am going to return these variables from this function x train, x test, y train, y test, x train scaled, x test scaled, scalar, and model. So these are all the main parameters that I am going to output from this function. Next is the cat boost, so also known as categorical boosting. Cat boost is like a method that really good at understanding the relationship between all the input features without any extra steps. Mathematically, this cat boost optimizes a specific objective function by using a gradient boosting with ordered boosting, which focuses on arranging trees in a sequence that minimizes errors efficiently, even when dealing with categorical data directly. But here we are not using any categorical data, all we have are numbers. So in this function also, I'm doing the same that we did in the XGBoost. So what we are doing is, so after doing this uh, train test splitting, so I'm doing the scaling operation. After that, I am initiating some hyperparameters. So these hyperparameters are different from the hyperparameters that I used before for XGBoost. So I'm doing the same grid search function. So here I'm using the same grid search CV function for finding the best hyperparameters. So once we have the best hyperparameters, I'm initiating this cat boost reducer with this best hyperparameters. And once we are done with model training, I'm doing the testing operation here. And finally, I'm printing the R2 score here. Next is the simple gradient boosting regressor. You will get this uh, gradient boosting regressor from the sklearn library. So here I have defined this gb reg function for this uh, simple gradient boosting regressor. So just like before, I have defined the data splitting operation here and uh, the data scaling operation here. Here I have defined this uh, hyperparameters. These hyperparameters are specific to this uh, gradient boosting regressor. And uh, using this uh, grid set CV, I am doing this uh, hyperparameter optimization. So this grid set CV takes these many parameters. I'm using this, uh, I'm setting this cross validation to five and uh, scoring method to R2. And once we got the best parameters from this grid search, so we save those best parameters in this best params variable. And uh, after that, I'm initiating this uh, gradient boosting regressor using the best parameters that we just got from this grid set CV. With that model, we do the training and testing here. So once we are done with our training and testing, we print the R2 score and we say that training completed. Once we are done, we return these variables from this function. So we are next moving on to this histogram based gradient boosting technique. So in this function, we will do this histogram based gradient boosting technique. This function is also available in sklearn.ensemble. This histogram based gradient boosting algorithm, it is a variation of traditional gradient boosting algorithm that we saw before. So this algorithm operates on histograms of the data rather than each individual data point. So that's the primary difference between the before gradient boosting algorithm and the histogram based algorithm. So here also in this function, we will do the same process of splitting the data into training and testing data sets. And then we are creating this standard scale for doing the scaling operation. And then we are defining some hyperparameters for creating this model. So here, again, I'm using the grid set CV for 
finding the best hyperparameters in these combinations. Uh, if you look at here, I'm initiating this uh, histogram gradient boosting regressor with the best parameters. After that, I have created a variable called random state. So random state 42 represents every time it won't uh, change. So the predictions will remain same actually. So here, if you look at the random state 42 I have specified here also. It means every time you perform this uh, trains test split operation, the data that you'll get is same. But this is not the case before actually. Here I have not defined any random state constant. So it means like if you define this train test split function without any random state variable, it means you will get a different sets of training and testing data every time you run this function. But here I have used this uh, random state. So this is not necessary actually. So this is an optional. For example, if you want to give this model to someone else or if you want to publish this model where the other party should be able to reproduce these results. So in that case, you need to specify this random state constant. Uh, once we are done with finding the best parameters, so we will define the histogram gradient boosting regressor and uh, we do training and testing operation. And next is the natural gradient boosting algorithm and this natural gradient boosting algorithm is like a turbocharged version of a traditional gradient boosting algorithm so here also we follow the same path and uh, like uh, splitting the data and scaling the data and uh, defining the hyperparameters and then using the grid set cv we do the hyperparameter tuning that is finding the best hyperparameter in the given combination of uh, hyperparameters and uh, followed by we use this uh, NGP regressor to define this uh, natural gradient boosting regressor with the best parameters that we found before and here I am using this uh, normal distribution you can use other distributions also depending upon uh, your requirement once we have created the all these functions so here I have created a general function so this function takes uh, index and uh, x and uh, y features actually so here I have defined this uh, list of uh, all the methods that i defined before as i have defined as you have seen i have defined this uh, natural gradient boosting regression function using this uh, ngb underscore reg function so that i have specified here similarly i have specified hist gradient boosting regression gradient boosting regression cat boost regression and xg boost regression i have mentioned all the function names here so if i give a regression model index number so it means this is first index that is 0, this is second index that is 1, third index that is 2, fourth index that is 3, fifth index that is 5. The indices of this list uh, starts from 0 to n minus 1. It means like uh, here you have 5 overall uh, functions we have, 5 variables in this list. So the first one starts at 0 and the last one ends at 4 and uh, each function of this returns these many output quantities x train x test y train y test x train scaled x test scaled scalar and model and it takes two input parameters that is the x that is that contains eight input features and uh, y that contains one output feature and once we obtained these from this function so i am just returning all of them from this uh, execute regression model if you want to use histogram based gradient regression boosting so you have to use the function corresponding to that that is number four so it means three here as python starts from zero so if you run it here if you run this uh, cell you will get the function name and the r2 score value as we can see the r2 score is 0.92 so let's do this if you run this you got the r2 score of 0.92 so it's good actually after that using the predictions that we have got from this model i am doing some data plotting here actually so first i am plotting the cement quantity versus concrete concrete strength blast furnace slag versus concrete strength so if you look at our predictions that are shown by these uh, orange dots are decent compared to the actual values that are shown by this blue dots and next i am plotting all the remaining features against this uh, compressor strength of concrete like fly ash water super plasticizer coarse aggregate fine aggregate age so if you look at here all of these predictions are also decent so our model is decent and reliable once we are done with uh, model predictions and uh, testing next here next objective is to save this model 
for future purpose. So I'm using this uh, joblib library for this saving and the loading operation. I am saving the model into this uh, concrete strength GB model dot pickle and uh, the scalar object I'm saving as scalar underscore GB dot pickle. Remember, whatever the model that you use for training and testing purposes, for example, you specified three here, it means it uses uh, histogram based uh, gradient regression boosting. This model is saved into this file. If you change the model, that is if you specify a different number here, for example, two, you will see the gradient boosting regression model is used. It means the model that we are going to save into the pickle file is also this gradient boosting regression model. For now, I am changing this back to three. That's it. Once you are done and once you have saved these objects, you will see two files concrete strength gb model dot pickle and uh, scalar gb dot pickle. So next after we save these files. Next, I'm opening this uh, predict GB notebook. So in this notebook, I have defined the logic for uh, loading the saved uh, machine learning model and the scalar object and also did a small prediction. So here, first I'm loading the saved machine learning model that is concrete strength uh, GB model dot pickle and uh, scalar GB dot pickle. So after loading these models and the scalar objects into these variables, I'm creating a new input feature. This new input feature represents a variety of concrete mixture. The values in this array I have randomly created does not correspond to any value in the test set or a training set. This is completely new. I have defined this uh, new input feature in the form of a NumPy array. Once we define this new input feature, we have to scale this feature using this uh, loaded scalar object that is this one. And once we scaled our input feature, we have to use the loaded model for doing this prediction using this uh, dot predict function. When you do this, the resulting the compressive strength of concrete is stored in this YP variable that I'm printing here. So overall, this model predicted 63.85 MPA. So the histogram based gradient boosting technique predicted 63 MPA. Let's try out another, maybe one that is categorical boosting regression. So the cat boost regression gave an R2 score of 0.9 and uh, these two files will be updated. And uh, when we load those two files here, we get the results from cat boost algorithm. This model predicted 65 MPA. Overall, both are nearby and uh, close 65 by cat boost and uh, 63 by histogram based gradient boosting. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. If you like our content, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel. Happy learning. Thank you.